We're now going to take the neck piece and work out at which position we're going to place the fretboard. And once we've established that, we're then going to mark up and route out a channel for the bi-directional truss rod. The first thing I'm going to do is establish a centre line on our piece of wood. And I will measure it at several points, make some little marks, and mark that up. We're then going to uh, position our body template on here and uh, we, we've got a cut out at the back here so we need to make sure that we don't go too far back in that direction Let's put it on the center line i'm going to present our fretboard onto this we've already marked onto the template where the 24th and the 21st fret is which is where it meets the body so line these up and uh, start to get an idea for where it's all all going and uh, then also have the profile piece that we put on and uh, uh, again, we can put that on roughly to line it up then, so we will see that we've got a plenty of space up at the top here to do our headstock. So once I've established where the fretboards are going, I can then line up the centre line on the centre line of the fretboard. Make sure it's nice and square. Let's get our straight edge on here. Mark that up and then let's mark a nice square so that's one end of the fretboard and uh, let's do the same at this end there you go, just come up to the fretboard there keep it nice and straight and we mark across there i'm also going to mark um, a couple of extra points on here i'm going to mark the nut position and uh, also where our 24th fret goes Let's mark some lines across. Uh, this truss rod will allow you to correct for both an up bow and a back bow on the neck. Uh, usually a neck will bend uh, being pulled by the force of the strings and you need to compensate against that so that you still leave a little bit of uh, a relief in the neck but also sometimes the neck might be a little bit too stiff so you might have to help the strings with a little bit of extra pull so, and that's what this type of truss rod does. Now we have to determine where the truss rod is going to go and what we need to do is uh, try and get this end uh, anchored in the part where the body will be uh, still what you would consider the body rather than the neck so if I put this back onto the uh, onto the template and we have our 24th fret marked and then we uh, line it all up what we want is we want the, the adjustment nut at the end to be accessible but still under the fretboard which it will be, in fact there we're just sitting under the nut and we'll have a little bit of distance to the nut and we'll mark it in that position and we'll consider that to be about the right position so then we need to set up the wood so that we can guide our router to mark, do this truss rod slot this is a special router bit for the truss rod and uh, what's special about it is it's just the right width it's, uh, I can't remember what it is, it's about five and a half millimetres, it's a little bit smaller than a normal router bit which the, you tend to find them at a quarter inch or six millimetres so it's a little bit narrower and uh, so that will allow us to get a nice snug fit I'm going to run along there and we're going to come to here, we're going to line up and we're going to stop there that's perfect, we're going to do this in uh, a few passes and each time we we drop the depth of the router uh, a little bit. We need a depth of 11.05 millimetres. 11 millimetres, I think, is the figure we're looking for there. So, we need to get our safety spectacles on and then we can start some work. We're now going to route the end of the channel where the truss rod nut is. Now the nut is actually a little bit wider than the, uh, the actual truss rod uh, blocks at the end. The, the blocks are five and a half mil, and we've cut that channel. We've actually got 6.4, so say six and a half mil for the nut. Not so critical for this because we want a little bit of movement around it. So uh, we want six and a half mil up to this extended position. So I've measured the extended position. I've put a new router bit in that is about seven millimeter wide 
uh, we're still on the center line make sure everything lines up Spot on. Spot on. So now, just got to get, get our chisel and uh, just square some of these edges off. I mean, this is a nice sharp chisel, so we're just taking the corners off, so there's very little to do. Upside down, but perfectly snug. There we go. That's nice and snug in there. So that's our truss rod. That will fit in nicely now. That will fit in, but I'm not going to press that in until I've just extended this out. So we need to access this. We need to have a little bit of an extra slot position there. So we put the key there and we need about something up to about there. So let's route a little bit more for our Allen key. Right. Bang, look at that. Perfect, flush, tight. We can get our Allen key in there. It's wide enough. This slot is wide enough so that then you've got the angle to be able to turn it, withdraw it to move it to the next position. Perfect, the fretboard will then cover up the truss rod and most of that slot. And then you've just got enough access there to truss, turn that over. 